sacrifice to get swole. Do you know what it is a sacrifice to get swole? Do you really? Huh? Well, when I was a kid, I had an uncle. For those of you who haven't read my book, or can't read, or just don't want to get the book to read, or ain't got time, or act like you ain't got time to read because you're on the fucking computer, or the motherfucking Nintendo, Sega Genesis, P23. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a little snippet of the book, man. Because y'all just think this muscle shit, this swole shit, this jack shit comes easy. And it don't. When I was a kid, I had an uncle, his name Butch. He was swole, man. The swollest man I ever seen in my life. You know what I'm talking about? Then, in my neighborhood, you had guys going to YA. The California Youth Authority. And jail. And prison. Getting out swole. So it was normal for me to see people swole, not like nowadays where you automatically think something negative when you see somebody swole. It was the norm in my generation. So as I seen my uncle, I'm like, that's how I go be. I didn't say that's what I'm gonna try to do. That's not. That's what I hope to be. Nothing. I said I'm gonna be buff and swole like that. And that's what I meant. I did anything to get to that point. So uh, my journey started when I was about 14 getting a little cement weights, right? You know what I mean? I was so serious at one time, I lifted above my head, trying to do shoulder presses, and fell through the whole wall. My parents had to get the whole damn wall fixed. You know what I'm saying? That's how serious I was. You know what I mean? So then. It went into, and that was in junior high. When I get to high school, my ninth grade year, for a lot of y'all that know my story, I was only 99 pounds. You see what I'm saying? I went to the football team, and I knew in my heart from playing street ball and uh, uh, flag football that I was good at football. So I made a team. These motherfuckers wouldn't let me play it down the whole season. So that's when my journey began. I got all the motherfucking back of Z's after that season and read how to get swole. You see what I'm talking about? By that time, my Uncle Butch had died in a car accident. You see? So I couldn't ask him. So I had to learn on my own. So I read the damn back of Z's page to page. And when I came up, you had Flex Wheeler. The Arnold was on his way out. You know what I'm talking about? Mike Christian. You know what I'm saying? You had Sean Ray. You know what I'm talking about? Paul Dillon. You had them type motherfuckers when I came up. Dorian Yates. You see what I'm saying? And so in the magazine, in the Sato motherfucking, oh, I ate 500 grams of uh, carbs, 200 grams of protein. You know what it said? I ate 6,000 motherfucking calories. That's what it said. So what I do is, after that, I started counting my calories. I, did, I wasn't even hungry. I didn't get hungry that much as a kid, which a lot of youngsters don't. So every time, every two hours, I look at that clock, I force fed my motherfucking self a thousand calories. So I ate six times a day, a thousand calories a motherfucking day. But what y'all didn't know <laughs> is when I started my 10th grade year, I gained 40 pounds, so I was up to 140, and so I was so good in the fucking summer double days that they put me on varsity. So I started going head up with the seniors at practice. I was like 200 pounds, 220, you see what I'm saying? And so I uh, uh, had a problem after that of migraines. Which none of y'all know unless you read the book, man. I had severe migraines to the point where I had strokes. It was like many strokes. Like if I overworked out, if I uh, had practice, practice too hard, I would go blind, my mouth would go numb, one side, each time it was different. Either the left or the right. I, whatever side chose to go dumb, that migraine day is with dub. And so I would have to, and I worked at a gym. And so after practice, when this migraine came on, I still had to go to work at the gym. I worked at 24 hour, what it was called, 24 hour dollars. The first one that ever opened up. And so I would 
go to work with a migraine, could see, could talk, because my mouth would be numb, and I'd go and lay down for a minute, get a nap, throw them up, because I always, any time I got the migraine, I had to throw up, and I would work out after, man. You see what I'm saying? But none of y'all know that. All y'all know is what you see now. You don't know the, the, the sacrifice I did to get swole. You see what I'm saying? While all my friends was kind to me, oh, you work out crazy. And now, all them motherfuckers now want to start working out 20 years later. You see what I'm saying? You got to sacrifice, man. When I was in college, man, I, right? The coach thought I was crazy. They was testing me. I didn't know what the fuck steroids was or nothing. Didn't care. Because I was already swollen than the motherfuckers that I was supposed to have been doing it. So I didn't have no, it wasn't even a thought in my mind. Like nowadays with all this fucking internet. But so, when I got to college, I was beasting. I was at Fresno State. So I would work out before practice. Be the only one in the weight room. Then I would go to practice after that. So the coaches seen this as like weird that I was working out before practice. So they would test me. Uh, like once a week, Coach Sweeney. If y'all see the uh, life story, monster, the Kali muscle story, or the uh, fresh out life at the penitentiary story, you would know what I'm talking about. And so I would get migraines like crazy in college because I was uh, working out so much, training hard, trying to become a professional football player. But y'all wouldn't know that. You see what I'm saying? I sacrificed when uh, people was going to parties, drinking. I didn't do none of that. I worked out. You know what I'm talking about? And so, man, if you want it, you want it. If you don't, you don't. Don't try to knock people down because they got swollen in 90 days, 6 months. Because they genetically gifted, baby. And you probably ain't. You see what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck what they on. You can get on a ton of shit. I got friends that's on a ton of shit and look like shit. You see what I'm saying? It was the mo the best bodies I seen was in prison, man. Straight up. You know why? Cause out on the streets, y'all got so many fucking excuses. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I gotta work. Oh, I got kids. I just got married. But the best bodies, <laughs> even though I seen the best bodies, as far as uh, how many people in one place, but the best bodies and the most muscular bodies are on the streets. So people try to say, oh, you had all the time in the world to work out the streets. But well, why these motherfuckers that's pros and on this Olympia stage look better than motherfuckers that's in prison? Because they learned the science, they learned how to eat right, and they banging heavy weights, and they just learned what to do. So it ain't no excuse, man. Ronnie fucking coming. He was a police working over 12 hours a day, training twice, and sometimes three times a day. So if you want it, you want it, man. That's like a motherfucker. If you want to be rich, you gonna do whatever it takes to get rich. You gonna work 16, sometimes 20 hour days without complaining. All you motherfuckers out here complaining. You don't want to sacrifice. So you know what? Leave it to us that will. And don't be mad at us. Don't be mad when you come on Instagram and I'm throwing all the weights around looking good. Don't get mad. Just find what you like to do. I was born for this. You see what I'm saying? Because I was a machine since I was a kid. When I get driven, when I focus on something, that's what I'm focusing on. You see what I'm saying? So just because you don't like all this, don't mean nobody else. Hey, you see all that muscle? Because I sacrificed to get this. And fortunately, God blessed me to not have migraines no more. So that, that was a blessing within itself. I had them from the age of 15. You no, know, I was about 16. 15, 16 till I was 31. So I had migraines for 15 years. You see what I'm saying? Even when I was in prison, I'd work out too hard, I'd get a migraine, which was dangerous because if a riot happened, a fight break out, I can't see. You see what I'm saying? So it was a lot of sacrifice, man, to get this muscle, man. I'm not gonna let nobody downplay it. Cause this muscle to me is like money. 
This muscle is getting me in movies, commercials. You see what I'm talking about? This muscle is wonderful. When you was a kid, motherfucker, that, oh, you know, talking that, oh, uh, when you was a kid, did you look at them comic books, you wanted to be buff. And if you say you didn't, you're a lie. Because any man want to be buff. Women, when you see Wonder Woman, you wanted to be buff. When you see Cat Wobbit fit in shape, you want to be muscular and fit. So don't come at me talk about you don't need all this muscle, it's too much, it's just you too lazy, and you don't want to sacrifice. So with that, to my youngsters, drive, man. Don't let nobody stop you. Don't get caught up in that party scene because that's going to stagnate you. You see what I'm saying? The alcohol boosts your estrogen up. You have bitch tits. You look, you be right there looking like a bra with a, uh, you had a muffin top and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? So keep driving, push. You see what I'm talking about? Sacrifice that whatever you want, whatever you want in life, you're going to have to sacrifice for it. And don't be mad at the next man because he willing to sacrifice. You see what I'm talking about? Because I'm willing to sacrifice, baby. Look at all that muscle. Let me give y'all a dose of this. Mm. Love y'all. Sacrifice, man. Don't let nobody stop you. Don't let them tell you nothing, man. Push. You understand me? And if they mad at us, <laughs> they mad at God. <laughs> Cut the camera.